Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar again, and I dislike liars. Ladies and gentlemen, Andrew Tate is one of the most controversial figures on the internet, and uh, I just uh, do not like this person lying. I just do not like misinformation. I hate the fact that the Matrix is now reappropriated for the stupidest reasons imaginable. So today, I'm gonna dive into the Matrix of Andrew Tate, uh, how the mainstream media like Tucker Carlson and Candace Owens, uh, you know, don't, don't do the level of journalism that they should. And uh, I'm going to look through a court case that makes Andrew and frankly, anybody in a situation that defends him look really, really bad. Now, I want to give a shout out to my friend Willie Mac Show. He's been on the podcast a few times and he's pretty much running a train on every red pill idiot that you can find on the Internet. I also want to shout out another channel known as Milk Bar TV who has done a lot of digging into this situation, and I will be referencing both of them a little bit. Uh, rea realistically, we're all kind of working on this video just because uh, <laughs> there's a court case that's out, and uh, reading through it is not exactly <laughs> beneficial for Tate. Now, I want to start off this video by saying the catalyst for me was reading a comment that was actually written by uh, an individual on my channel. You made a video about Andrew Tate when he got in jail, but you didn't make one after his release. What a shame! Now, this is uh, kind of implying that, you know, I made a video where he obviously got, where he obviously got, like, uh, you know, charged, he was sent to prison, but uh, there was no confirmation, uh, you know, if he actually is out of prison, you know, beyond just getting a looser house arrest, okay? Done. The judge has picked up this indictment, looked at it, and said, this is garbage, let him go. They're bulletproof indictment. After all I just described, they finally put together a document that the judges instantly said, let him go, this man should not be held. Oh, they let you go, huh there, buddy? The judges let you go? Well, I'm gonna break through the matrix and I'm gonna show you some nuggets of truth. Fresh from portal.just.romania. Right here, ladies and gentlemen, in regards to Emery Andrew Tate, Tristan Tate, Radu Luana Alexandra, and Nagel Georgiana Manuela. So I'm gonna read you something here real quick. I'm gonna show you what he's talking about, the judge let him go. So defendants uh, um, must comply with the following obligations. A, to appear before the preliminary ruling, the judge or court, wherever, whenever they are called, to immediately inform the judicial body that ordered the measure or before, which the case is in respect of the change of housing. C, to report to the police body designated with their supervision, respectfully the police station in the territorial constituency, contingu constituency of the defendant's home according to the surveillance program surveillance program drawn up by the police body or whenever they are called not to exceed the territorial limit of Ilfov County and Bucharest except with the prior approval of the preliminary chamber judge or the court dog they don't even let you leave the city or the county that's like me trying to leave pro the province of Ontario now Andrew Tate has been a uh, flight risk, and that's not me saying it, that's literally by his own admission. Listen to this. If I fuck up big time and England wants me in jail, I can fly on a Nigerian passport, or an American, or an English, or a Polish, or an Estonian. I have so many fucking passports, what, are you gonna block them all? I've got four more I haven't even named on YouTube. They can't stop me traveling. There's always a passport I can pull out. There's always a driver's license I can pull out. If you ban one, I've got another one. I've got bank accounts in night. Whoa, wait, hold on. You're telling me the prosecution was worried he was a flight risk? That's him admitting it, dog. That's the problem with just talking out of your ass. When you have so many lies floating on top of lies, and you have so much, like, bolstering, and you're trying to impress a 12-year-old, you're going to say shit that the prosecution doesn't forget. This, they didn't forget. And that's exactly why he is on house arrest. It, it, they just like extended the leash a couple inches, all right? He's still chained into his home. He's still under investigation. So again, I wanted to address this because it was a little bit stupid by the amount of defenders over here. So again, ladies and gentlemen, let's dive further into his case right now. So according to Andrew Tate, Palm Beach County accuser sued by kickboxer Andrew Tate for alleged defamation. So in this case, it actually says that Tate sued Emma Gabby, who lives in Palm Beach County, on July 12th, alleging defamation, false imprisonment, civil conspiracy, tortuous inf inter interference, intentional infliction, and negligent infliction of emotional distress. I'm going to go skip through and show you from Justia, Tate et al. v. Gabby et al. Okay, so instead over here, you've got the Andrew and Tristan Tate versus Emma Gabby, Willie Gabby, Mona Gabby, all these people, okay? Filed August 14, 2023 which is why I'm making this video because it's so close to the time frame. Now, what I did was I went to mypalmbeachclerk.com, 
E-Case View, I looked up Tate Andrew versus Gabby Emma. And in this situation, I found the complaint sheet right here. So you can click that little uh, PDF button and read this all for yourself. Now this contains a 57-page uh, indictment, an indictment that I have read all of. You know why? Because I like to do my research. Because unlike some of these mainstream media figureheads that pick one side or the other, it's always worth reading through everything so you can get a full accounting of the entire picture. And this is not a good painting for Andrew Tate and the people that he's apparently defending in this entire situation. Now in this complaint, Tristan and Andrew Tate sue defendant, and of course they mention the parties over here. So, however, where it gets really, really disingenuous, or it starts to give me an aura of disingenuousness, is on point 27. Compared to Western Europe and the United States, Romania has long been known to be a traditional company with rich cultural history, traditions, and Christian values. Uh, Tate's, a, Tate's a Muslim brother now, okay? Come on now. Complying with the Tate brothers' personal convictions and worldview, because of this, beginning in or about 2015, the Tate brothers became full-time residents of Romania. Indeed, the Tate brothers have gone on record saying through their spokesperson, Matea Petrescu, that one of the reasons they chose Romania was because of the country's strong laws against abusing women. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's one of the things, but there's also another reason too that he stated, not through his spokesperson, why am I doing the hand vagina thing? Matt, not through their spokesperson, but through Fresh and Fit. Now, I'm gonna paraphrase this seven minute long video, but if you wanna find it, you can absolutely Google it on the internet and watch this for yourself. Generally, what Andrew says is he starts a webcam business in his apartment back home in the United Kingdom, fires one of his top earning girls after a dispute. The cops bust in later on suspicion of him assaulting this person who he claims to also be a dumb hoe. Investigators are sent and, and, uh, and they basically hold him for a little bit. Uh, they find some new evidence, apparently according to Andrew, somewhere around 11 new charges. And then he claims that he could not live under this government and left to Romania because he also had a fight coming up there. Listen to this one real quick. Because she had no evidence and she was lying. Because all the other girls in the house went to on my and behalf. And testified and against she was, her. She's lying. Yeah, right. So we're like, ah, okay, but we've been through his life. He has a Lambo and a bunch of pussy and he's enjoying himself. And that's not allowed in the Western world. Yeah. So we've been through his life and we found 11 new reasons to raise crap against him. Mm. So I had 11 new charges, blah, blah, blah. And I just woke up one day and said, I cannot live in this kind of, I will not live under a government that will do this to me when I've done nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. So I had to leave and go somewhere. And by coincidence, I had a fight coming up in Romania. So I went and fought in Romania. And I just thought, you know what? I'll hang around here for a few months mm. and then boom you know when you have so many fucking lies floating around on the internet it's not that hard to contradict this idiot so the way that they describe emma gabby in this is she's a predator who has a long list of baiting men into relationships for the specific purpose of destroying their lives she has a chain of victims going back several years to when she was a minor she devises sophisticated narratives to elicit compassion and attraction from unsuspecting men she uses these men as hosts, taking what she wants for personal, emotional, or economic gain. At some point, she begins to exert control through intentional infliction of emotional distress, causing injury to the host. If her efforts to control do not produce an immediate return on her investment, she revokes consent for prior acts and threatens to have her host arrested uh, unless her demands are met. So one of the other allegations is law enforcement, this, uh, these lawyers bring is the, uh, this Gabby individual has a long history of fraudulently misrepresenting her age on various dating apps and targeting older successful men. She has a combination of fake IDs and false narratives. Now, again, I want to start off by saying that this was all in Florida from what I understand. Now I looked up Florida law. 794.05, unlawful activity with minors, certain minors. A person 24 years of age or older who engages in activity with a person 16 or 17 years of age commits a felony of the second degree. All right, so, uh, okay, that, that's pretty messed up. But Muda, what if they lied? According to Florida law, ignorance or belief as to victim's age, no defense. When in this chapter, the criminality of conduct depends upon the victim's being below a, spe a certain specified age, ignorance of the age is no defense. Neither shall mi misrepresentage, uh, misrepresentation of age by such person nor a bona fide belief that such person is over the specified age be a defense. So even if you didn't know, all right, or even if you were lied to, it's still on you as a, an adult. And the people in this situation are not young guys. They are mid thirties and beyond. So let's actually look at some of these cases that they bring up as a way to, uh, you know, downplay this, this, this girl. So point 49, jail John is incarcerated because E. Gabby accused him of 
blanking her. Jail John is currently serving a lengthy prison sentence. His life has been utterly destroyed. The pattern of behavior used on Jail John repeats the same pattern of behavior used against other victims. Jail John was induced into an illicit relationship with a minor under false pretenses. According to Marlon Fisher, M. Fisher, Jail John performed deviant acts in the bedroom, such as urinating. Yeah, I'm supposed to feel bad for this guy. Now you might be like, whoa, who is this Jail John fella? Now, according to Milk Bar TV, now according to uh, Milk Bar TV and uh, how his assessment of Candace Owens' interview, one that we'll be looking at shortly later on as we go through this list, had come out and basically, uh, you know, outed that uh, this uh, Jail John individual is actually this guy right here. Now, this is where I want to bring up the uh, actual uh, people, the, I guess you could say, um, victims, it seems, if you read this entire docket yourself. These people are painted uh, in a way where they've apparently been taken advantage of by uh, E. Gabby, this minor at the time. Now, this guy over here, Jail John, uh, we looked into it, and based on, uh, you know, Milk Bar TV, He's pretty much confirming this is Keith Fox. But uh, again, if you actually go and check out Candace Owens, for instance, the Daily Wire host, she is actually so stupid that like literally two weeks ago, she uploaded Candace Investigates Andrew Tate's uh, Victims. And inside this video, if you go to like, you know, 16 minutes into it, they beep out like Keith Fox, the name. To do serious time because of it. So again, just so you understand, she's got this trial going on with she is now with. But if you look at the actual lip movements from Candace Owens, it's pretty evident that she's saying Keith Fox. Now, I'm free to offer up a retraction. If I'm wrong, feel free to prove that I'm wrong. Now, according to uh, the actual indictment over here, the not indictment, but the actual, uh, you know, complaint, uh, at point 50, it literally starts mentioning or sorry, point 51. M. Fisher, Marlon Fisher, came to understand that Jail John was sentenced to decades of incarceration because of Blank's accusations. Now, in this situation, um, it says that Jail John performed deviant acts in a bedroom. And so we went up and used Keith Fox's name and looked up, you know, actual like uh, news articles in, uh, in the Florida area. And it turns out that Keith Fox was, you know, in, well into his late 50s. And if you actually read the article in this situation, it's pretty damning. First off, he is completely guilty and sentenced to 24 years of prison. So clearly there is, uh, you know, these decade long, uh, I guess, incarceration decades long. And also in the situation, Keith Fox, uh, you know, uh, the mom of the girl, you know, uh, E. Gabby in this case, uh, employed a private investigator who actually had caught these people in the act. So he had actual media that he could then show to law enforcement, which led to the actual incarceration of the scumbag. Now, again, based on what I've read, according to this, it seems, you know, that they're painting this guy to be a victim that was taken advantage of because this girl lied about her age, allegedly. Now, again, Florida doesn't give a shit about that. In fact, most people don't care about this. This guy is in his 50s preying on individuals that at the time were well under the age of 18. Now, I don't know why they used the name Jail John. I have to assume that obviously if they used Keith Fox, may not be. <laughs> I don't feel like any jury or judge or anybody in any prosecution department would feel uh, particularly sympathetic. Again, very, very weird that they would do this. But again, we've got a lot to cover, so let's move on. But of course, it goes even wilder, okay? Let's get down into the situation. The tragic case of Dustin Milner, okay? Now, Dustin Milner is an interesting character. In fact, I'm gonna let Tate put it the best way, all right? Tate actually talked about this. I'm gonna let him describe this guy to you. So yeah, if you're ever making content on this guy, all of his stands either use Billie Eilish songs or some random rapper nobody's ever heard of. And uh, just just to let you know, all right? Uh, your, the YouTube content ID system is, is real friendly. That's why you're hearing my voice. Okay, so anyways, ladies and gentlemen, he's a weird dude. This is a name you got to watch out for. So the name that they mention here at the end of that is Dustin Miller. Obviously, Dustin Miller, we just looked at him. Now, Dustin Miller's story is the most heartbreaking of all. He uh, had actually ended up taking his own life, all right? And uh, of course, the, true st the two strongest sources of intelligence regarding this tragedy are Dustin Milner's brother, Jason Milner, and Dustin Milner's close friend, Adam Heinrich. 
So we're literally going with an assumption from his brother, who, uh, you know, obviously, you know, that's clearly not biased right over there. Also, where is the accusation if these are the strongest sources of intelligence? These are two people bringing about their theory. It doesn't even appear that this is like overly... Con Anyways, let's go into it. According to Justin Milner, so again, if called to testify, Jason Milner and Adam Heinrich would likely state that Dustin Milner quickly became enraptured by E. Gabby's mystique and seductive... Ch She's underage, guys! What the hell? which lured him into an extremely volatile relationship. So Gabby allegedly manipulated, gaslit, and emotionally abused Dustin Milner, a person predisposed to depression. However, go down a little bit, eventually driving Dustin Milner to take his own life at the age of 35, while still in a relationship with Gabby, who had yet to turn 18. And if you just read exactly what kind of triggered this level of depression, he literally just got ghosted. She just didn't respond, and that's what sent him over the edge. And I'll say it's tragic to see somebody lose their life, but I honestly find it difficult to feel bad for somebody who is 35 years of age interacting with a minor. Guys! Why are we even defending somebody that was 35 plus, knew better, and underneath Florida law would still be violating a second degree felony? Why? I get it. It's a tragedy that it happened. Somebody took their own life. How you expect me to feel bad for a scumbag like that is beyond me, okay? Now, of course, the deception of Tyler Hensel. E. Gabby fraudulently induces Tyler Hensel into a relationship and extorts him. Tyler Hensel is another boyfriend of E. Gabby. The summary of E. Gabby's statements to the investigators are as follows. E. Gabby led him to believe that she was 26 when she was really 17 at the time. In order to induce Hensel into an illicit relationship, Hensel, who was at a young age of 35 when he had intercourse with Gabby and was thus deceived into believing he was having an illicit relationship. And at least in Tyler's case, reading into it, once he realized that there was an age mismatch, he was actually one of the people that broke off contact. Uh, not that he should have made it in the first place, but this might be the only guy that has, like, some possible level of redeeming quality out of the rest of the scumbags in this. What's even wilder in this situation is the defamation of Joel Friedman, okay? E. Gabby defamed a man named Joel Friedman to Marlon Fisher, okay? <laughs> Another one of the scumbags in this situation. She was falsely accusing Friedman and then published said defamatory statement. So here they actually bring a text message that makes everyone, that makes these adults look even worse. So this is a discussion between Marlon Fisher and Gabby. So read this out. E. Gabby, can I message him Joel to tell him I have a boyfriend? Uh, Marlon Fisher says, as you clearly understand, nobody cares you have a boyfriend. But if you'd like to tell him that he, you know, did you, by all means, you know, hurt you. Uh, e. Gabby says, I'd like to not put our relationship at risk. E. Gabby says, I'll gladly tell him when I'm 18 and anybody else that happened with. E. Gabby, so sweet you are. So you're breaking up with me because I don't want to tell Joel that he, you know, R-worded me. Once I don't know if he could tell other people I'm underage or when he would tell. And if they know I'm dating you, what happens next? Dog, you knew she wasn't 18. At your age, you are committing a fel- I'm supposed to, like, fucking sympathize with these people? These are the downtrodden men? These scumbags? Are you serious? Now, if you thought reading that was disgusting, I want you to listen to Candace Owens of The Daily Wire. You know, the same publication that's all about, you know, protecting kids and shit. Listen to how she describes the situation. Either she's getting paid off by the Tates, or she is genuinely stupid. So sweet you are. You're breaking up with me because I don't want to tell Joel that he me. One, I don't know if he would tell other people that I'm underage or, he, or who he would tell. And if they know that I'm dating you, what happens then? Two, it'd be awkward to go to a drum circle again, LOL. Marlon Fisher ended up actually confronting Friedman. You imagine your girlfriend tells you that she was by some other man. How stupid are you? You literally just read to an admission that this person was in, this person was romantically interested, literally sent a text message. How you, as the Daily Wire pundit, cannot chastise this dipshit for engaging with a minor, according to this text message, is beyond me. I want to ask the Daily Wire, like, how stu like, how can you actually let that stupidity fly by your network? Like, Jesus Christ, it's insanity to me. She's wild. Milk Bar makes a pretty good point where he adds up all of these names like Keith Fox, Marlon Fisher, Dustin Milner. Marlon was one of the people that got a formal accusation. 
Dustin Milner and Tyler Hensel did not get any accusation. So again, going by Tate's description of this girl just hands out kidnapping and whatnot charges to like seven people, that's not true. She wasn't for, she, she, she like, she, she did not charge at least two of these individuals, all right? And the people that Tate is defending and bringing up in this lawsuit are utter scumbags. But again, the reason why I'm making this video is because I really don't like lies like this. And when I actually break out of the matrix, the Tate tricks, so to speak, and I look down into these files, it's even more fucked up than I initially thought. And it makes me genuinely angry and sick to my stomach the more I make this video. So I'm gonna try wrapping things up. What's even wilder to me is when he talks to Tucker Carlson, who I expect to be like an actual journalist, but he's just a clown from San Francisco, it seems. Listen to how this goes right now. Listen to how Tate is downplaying the situation. And these guys let him get away with it. Listen to it. So what are you charged with? That's a really good question. I'm charged with being the head of an organized criminal group, which is in charge of recruiting girls to make TikTok videos to steal the money from the TikTok views. Okay, hey, Tucker, how about we just hire some people to like immediately crush him right there? This is not a hidden indictment, by the way. You can actually read this right here. The official indictment of Andrew Tate, Tristan Tate, and all these other people. All their crimes and charges are listed and explained. An indictment right here that we can watch and read together. So this is from the June 15th. You can read this right now. So they formed an organized criminal group with the purpose of committing, uh, in other states, uh, the crime of human trafficking through actions of recruiting victims carried out by Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate and subsequently under their coordination through actions of sheltering and transporting the victims. So they forced the victims to engage in pornographic activities, subjecting them to forced labor, forming an organized crime group, and so on and so forth. Recruited by deception, the defendant transported her from the UK and provided shelter for her in a building. And here's the thing, if the actual, like, people who followed Tate religiously learned how to read, yes, it's true, they mentioned TikTok in this indictment, but literally on page one, before TikTok is even mentioned, they literally mention using the website OnlyFans.com for this purpose and by subjecting them to forced labor. Then also using TikTok.com as a advertising funnel, I assume, is the more you read down. In fact, OnlyFans is mentioned 10 times where they constantly say using the website OnlyFans subject to forced labor, using the website TikTok to attract over a thousand followers because, of course, TikTok is a funnel to guide people into what I assume to be the OF pages. And then, of course, you can keep going down and they consistently mention OnlyFans. If you're going to lie, then you should at least learn. Again, all it took was like 30 seconds of reading and control effing, something that you can do in your spare time if you actually want to reach objective facts. Again, this is how you break out of the Tatrix. Uh, according to the indictment 2016, Andrew Tate, using the application while in Romania, recruited by deception the victim by falsely inducing her about the intention to establish a family marriage relationship in the existence of false feelings. Uh, you know, this actually fits the uh, description of the United Nations when it comes to tr uh, human trafficking, uh, which is basically the recruitment, transport, transfer, harboring, or receipt of persons by the mean of threat or use of force or other forms of coercion. You know, if you actually read into like Epstein for a minute, it gets really wild because even in Epstein's indictment. Now, if you read closely into Epstein's indictment, you can even see that Epstein actively encouraged certain of his victims uh, to recruit additional girls to be, you know, you know, put into bad situations. Now, again, this is weird because a lot of these guys make it out like human trafficking is from the movie Hostel. Like it's sort of like overly dramatized when in reality in you know a lot of these cases it really is just like the main ringleader recruiting one person and then that person recruits another person and it almost becomes like a serious pyramid scheme of awful behavior but the reason i'm bringing this up is just so we can play a clip from tate where uh, i i i just i just want i just want to see if uh, the audience here sees a similarity bottom bitch is the one who does the selling you don't do the selling the girl has to hear it from a girl. And this is where your bottom bitch has to be trained. That's why I said it's so important to have a good 
first girl. What's that first girl gonna do, huh? Is she going to go, you know, train the other one? Like, come on now, all right? This is getting to the point where it's, it's almost a semantic argument at this point. These people are really, really predatory individuals. And a lot of these old clips do not work really well uh, for exonerating this individual. In front of the eye of, in front of anybody that looks at this with, you know, an objective lens, they'll be disgusted with the guy Tate really is. And it seems like as this case matures and more and more of this information comes out and more and more of this information gets referenced, it's not looking too good. Now, normally in situations like this, uh, by the time I'm finished these videos, I'd have a long sort of discussion about like, hey, why are you following people like this? You know, do you really need uh, somebody on the internet that's this interesting uh, to explain basic concepts like working hard, you know, doing what you can to be successful and... Uh, you know, eating right or working out. If that's what you need, all right, this information could be passed to you by anybody, a doctor uh, or whatever. If you're looking for a father figure, you can do a lot better than people like Andrew Tate and whatnot. Now, at the end of the day, I think realistically where I want to end this off at is based on everything that you've seen and these case documents that you've read, you know, a lot of people say, hey, don't let the matrix confuse you. We broke out of the Tatrix and we decided to read the information for ourselves. Now, again, if anybody wants to, you know, I guess play devil's advocate, which based on what I've read, it's pretty difficult to do so, then honestly, this should be a wake up call for anybody following this kind of behavior. If you want to be a good person, if you want to be somebody that's an improved version of yourself, then the best thing you can do is introspection, self-reflection. Go look in the mirror, see where your inadequacies are, and honestly address them the best way that you can. If you feel you don't look good, there's ways to improve that. But sitting around and moping and fucking paying $50 for online courses isn't going to get you there. Working hard, improving yourself, even if it's like half of a percent each day, is better than nothing, okay? Because a year down the road, when you start looking into yourself and bettering yourself as a person, you'll see the changes. Of course, it requires you to put in work and effort, and that effort isn't going to be or sorry, the, the reward isn't going to be as clear cut for the amount of effort you put in in the beginning. But as you develop, you know, your habits, as you develop yourself mentally, uh, physically, emotionally, financially, the rewards, you know, we hope will come in due time. And even if they don't, at least you attempted versus following these idiots on the internet. But again, that's just me uh, diatribing into something that isn't really ultimately... The, ultimately, the journey is going to be done by you. It's not going to be by people like me or Andrew Tate or anybody. It's all on you. You want to be an alpha? You create your fucking alphaness. You create your world. But ladies and gentlemen, based on Andrew Tate's um, cases, it's tough to follow this guy. And uh, <laughs> it's tough to... It, it, the people that once defended him, it's getting tougher and tougher the more this kind of stuff comes out. But ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think in the uh, comment section below. Sorry for the sort of gorilla style exit. Ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar, and uh, yeah.